Welcome back everybody. Today's another episode of The Parts Bin. All right, guys, here in the parts bin, we get to show you some of the fun stuff we work on here at the shop. Uh, to start this episode off, I wanna talk about these awesome intercooler boots. Uh, we made these a while ago, and we are really ramping up production on these things. These are awesome. Uh, these are a five-ply aramid fiber silicone boot. I don't know of many other five-ply boots out there, and we wanted to have the best boot, period. So wh when I say aramid fiber, that's really, really important. Most of your inexpensive boots you're gonna find have polyester fibers in them. And those have a much lower temperature rating. Those are more designed for gasoline applications, not so much for the diesel world. Even your stock boots are better than an aftermarket polyester boot. So if it doesn't say Aramid or super high temperature rated, it's not, so don't get it. So this is an Aramid fiber and a while ago we did a video when we first introduced these showing you the difference between polyester fibers and Aramid. And we actually put these on fire uh, we put them in an oven, got them real hot so you can see what happens. And I actually want to kind of go back to that video right now to show you the difference when the, the fibers get hot in polyester versus aramid, how they get brittle and crunchy. So take a quick look at this video real quick. These were at 550 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes. This, as you can see, is no bueno. Uh, this looks like somebody did some spray insulation foam on it. <laughs> yeah. That just came out of the boot. Yeah, oh, it, it literally roasted like a marshmallow in there. Um, this is a four ply polyester boot from eBay. Um, and yeah, you can see it's just not, so that went yeah. through the the elastic state. What is it? Flexible now? What happens if you give it a little 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 squish? So here's the cool part. This is actually stuck to the tray. But if you uh, if you start doing that, it sounds healthy. Yeah, it's probably fine. I mean, I'd run it, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Now so, squeeze the factory boot. What's that next one there? So the factory boots are actually aramid fiber and they have either three or four plies depending on the year of your vehicle, but they're very thin. You can hear there's no, nothing, nothing hinky no going crunching, on in there, so no they crunching. Can handle it. So they can handle it. Our boots are five ply. They're much thicker and you know, Now again, why do ours have the steel rings on them? So basically the, the, the reinforcing is what's holding the silicon material together because silicone is a, it's a plastic, it's a, it's a, it's a big spring, it's very stretchy. And um, basically on the factory boots, they're counting on the strength of the reinforcing to hold the actual material together from the pressure that's, you know, trying to make it expand. The steel rings are there so that they have some actual mechanical support uh, from a steel ring as opposed to just the reinforcing material. All right, so when that, when that thing crackles, you know it has lost all elasticity. It can no longer hold, it just it breaks. And when it breaks, the silicone can't hold the pressure, you blow out your boots. I mean, it's happened a lot. It happens often on the hot side of your intercooler. Your compound turbo systems get it really bad. So these boots are awesome. So we, we have upgraded or we have expanded our line is what we've done. So we now have kits, you know, factory replacement kits for second gen Dodges and third gen Dodges. So if you have old factory boots that are worn out, you want to upgrade, we have drop-in kits that'll work with your existing piping. Uh, make sure to get the awesome clamps that come with it. Uh, these clamps are way better than the factory stuff, way more pressure on these. And uh, these work great. We have these on our giveaway truck. They're, I mean, they're, they're holding up lots of pressure and they'll work really, really well. So uh, again, these boots are awesome. Check them out. And uh, if you have any questions, give us a call here at the shop on these things. Uh, next up, Turbo blankets. A while ago we did a test on turbo blankets. I was actually shocked myself. I thought that the turbo blanket would not make a difference in spool up and it actually made a dramatic difference in spool up. And so since that video, we've kind of 
started making turbo blankets and um, we actually have these for all your T3, T4, T6 turbine housings, but we also have them for our compound turbo kits. These are specially made for us and this is the, this is the third gen towing hot pipe. This connects your stock turbo to your S400 right here. And this is a custom made uh, blanket for these. Um, this guy here is our ultimate towing kit for the second gens and so this is a hot pipe that goes from your HX35 or K27 down to your 369 and uh, yeah holds that heat in and it it really helps with spool up. I was actually I'm still amazed at how effective it is. It's just such a simple idea that really works and those sometimes are the best so if you need a turbo blanket your underhood temps are getting hot and your paint's kind of flaking that sometimes happens. We have these here for you so check them out. The last thing I want to talk about in our parts bin today is this guy right here. This is a, a freeze plug threaded plug kit. Now this is kind of the brainchild of Josh. He's our local common rail guru. Uh, he's making a lot of power in the common rail world. And he had the six point grate, he called it the 6.8 liter. And uh, he lost that engine because one of his freeze plugs under his valve cover, which there's a whole bunch in the common rail head and the 24 valve head, blew out and when that blew out, all the coolant was pumped right into his oil, down into his bearings, and he lost the engine. And so there's companies out there who offer heads with this service already done. All of these little uh, freeze plugs are, are tapped, and then they put this uh, threaded pipe plug in there with some sealant, and you don't have to worry about that coming out. If you have a high RPM common rail, sometimes the pressure will pop that out. And he even had a bypass kit on it, it still popped out, so it's a really good idea. So. Um, this is a DIY kit. You can do this yourself. We send you the tap, we send you the plugs, and the little uh, thread locker, thread sealant, so you can uh, do this on your head. Josh has done this in frame on his trucks. It's difficult, but it is possible, and a lot easier than replacing your engine. If you have a head off and you're about to put it on, this is a very inexpensive thing to do that can save you a ton of money down the road. So I highly recommend you do this. I mean, it comes with everything you need. You don't have to drill anything, you literally just a tap is sized for these holes, tap it, uh, run it down there, put the plugs in with some thread sealant, and you're golden. So anyway, if you're getting a new head on your truck, don't put it on there without doing this. And if it's on your truck and you're nervous, you want to look into this. So anyway, this is a simple thing, save you a lot of money down the road. All right guys, that's going to wrap up this episode of the parts bin with boots, turbo blankets, and head freeze plug thread and plug kits. If you have any questions about these, give us a call here at the shop. We've got guys who can help you out with this. Make sure you get the right parts for your truck. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on the parts bin. Thanks.